Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And as I pause to ask a question about Margaret Thatcher's enduring legacy, proof of the pudding is already dropping into my inbox, Julie writes. Maybe the Thatcher collection could be displayed in the London dungeon instead. She still gives me the shivers. Um, this is a story about the Victoria and Albert Museum turning down a collection of Margaret Thatcher's personal um, clothes, jewellery, political mementos. The family will now instead sell it off. And I, I just wonder two things. Number one, do you think it should have been kept on permanent public display? And number two, of course, is why does she have this enduring legacy of being loved or loathed in equal measure. It, it, it occurs to me that there must be an age. I'm just looking at my colleagues. I'm now in the position, I'm at the stage of life where I'm cursed with much younger colleagues and it's not going to get any better anytime soon, is it? I just wonder what is the age at which Margaret Thatcher doesn't hold some sort of thrall over you politically, whether it's because you are um, uh, repelled by what she did or what she represented or whether it is because you are um, enamoured of it. It's, it's quite bizarre. You'll remember when she passed away there was dancing in the streets which is I know, an ugly sight really when anybody passes away. Celebration seems an inappropriate response and yet people who did indulge in celebration would have been able to provide you with very compelling accounts of why she deserved to be greeted with songs like the wicked ding dong the witch is dead and that sort of thing. And yet on the other hand um, people really come over a little bit funny at the very mention of Margaret Thatcher's name. One of my colleagues who I will not embarrass thus will I suspect be digging deep into his or her wallet to buy some of these personal items. Some people hold Margaret Thatcher in a, a, a sort of height of esteem that is usually reserved for Winston Churchill in this country. And yet, I mean, she obviously led us to victory against the Argentinians in the Falkland Islands, but in comparison on the world stage to the Second World War, that, that was a, a much, much smaller conflict. If you looked at the voting breakdown for the general election, it was astonishing to see that the few areas in which Labour managed to wash its own face almost all had links with, once you moved out of major cities, almost all had links with the former mining communities, where there used to be coal mines. The notion of a Conservative government remains anathema. So there's two ways into this. It's, it's something that I think has intrinsic historical value. The museum has said it's refused the clothing on the basis that they collect only items of outstanding aesthetic or technical quality rather than those with intrinsic historical value. So the whole collection, power suits, handbags, jewellery, will now be sold at auction. The proceeds will be split among her children and grandchildren. I want to know whether or not you think the, the Margaret Thatcher collection should be put on permanent display, whether or not the VNA should have accepted it, 0345 6060 973. Um, the family are going to flog them off instead. You can also tell me on the same number whether or not you think they should try and find, try a little bit harder to find a permanent home. But what I think we'll have more fun with, perhaps, is the question of what those words mean to you. Margaret Thatcher. Why? So I want to know what pops into your head when I say those words. I'm nearly 53. I despised and still despise Thatcher. I bet it's beep beep who'd buy her stuff. Would never betray a colleague thus. I have to say it's, it's a long-standing colleague, not a recent arrival in the bus queue. <laughs> um, and similarly, uh, other people say, why are you surprised at the museum's decision, James? Just last week, former steel workers and their families came to Westminster to protest at the loss of their livelihoods. And so it seems this Tory government is picking up where Maggie Thatcher left off with the closure of entire industries and the total devastation of whole regions of Britain, some of which has never recovered to this day. Hey, I'm not here to hold a torch for David Cameron, but that's not a fair comparison. Uh, the, the miners were led in, over a cliff of oblivion by Arthur Scargill. The still, and Margaret Thatcher was quite happy to see them go. That was her great stroke of genius. So she was prepared to see the entire mining industry die. And nobody on the other side thought she would. They thought eventually we have to win because there's no way they can wave goodbye to the miners forever. She was tough enough to do it. But David Cameron has presided over a decline in the steel industry that's a result of market forces and international 
change, not as a result of domestic political ambition. So that that's just an example from my inbox there of, of how deep feelings still run on the issue. I quite like Margaret Thatcher lovers because they, they seem to have lived through the same era that I lived through and experienced completely different um, uh, realities. Nine minutes after 11 is the time. Margaret Thatcher's collection will not be put on permanent public display. I want you to tell me whether you think it should be. But I really want you to tell me why she still has such a hold over this nation. You, of course, more than welcome to tell me that she doesn't, but judging by the people who've already got in touch, here's another one. Anything relating to Thatcher should be placed in a lead box and buried tens of miles beneath the earth. I told you feelings still ran high. Are you a lover or a hater? 03456060973. And why? I'm 43 and I've got an A-level in politics, which I sat while she was still Prime Minister. So I have a bit of an understanding up to a point of precisely why she was so polarizing and inspired such strong feelings. But let's just pick a colleague. Axel, how old is that? Axel, how old are you, mate? Uh, Axel is 23 years old. He's 20 years younger than me. The words Margaret Thatcher really have just come straight out of a history book. Incredibly bright young man, very well informed. Explain to him why Margaret Thatcher remains such or is such a huge figure in British politics. Why those words still see my inbox filling up with hatred and not yet with love, but the love will be there as well. Ten minutes after 11 is the time. I wonder how much you'd have to pay to get hold of a handbag. Danny's in Kingswood. The words Margaret Thatcher, Danny, what do they mean to you? Well, I, I doubt you'll get many people ringing up your programme saying this, James. Um, but uh, to me, I grew up um, in the sort of early 80s, really. And I think if you lived through it, um, you, you can kind of remember that time. I don't know. Can you? I mean, I, I, Yeah, of I, course I, I can. I think, I, I think if you live through it, it's very... It sort of hangs heavy on the palate. You can remember it, and you, you can see through your mind's eye at the time. I mean, my, for example, I've, in my family, she's always held a very high regard, Margaret Thatcher, and I think we are a typical example of the sort of people that did really well under her. I think in the last general election, let me give you an example. In the last general election we've just had, mm. there was a word that was floating around that everybody was using, and it was aspiration. Do you remember that? Yes, of course. And they were saying, why... Meaningless. Why the Tories win, you know, and the aspiration was being banded around. And that's the word or the feeling that, that would describe her tenure for families like mine. I come from an old... No, old no, mate, she, 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 she carved up stuff that everybody owned and gave it to people who already had a few quid. Well, no, but I'm, I'm just I'm telling you about my family. From my family, family's point of view, my mum was born in a flat in the Old Kent Road. My, my nan was from Stepney. My, my family didn't have a P to P in, right? But at the start of her tenure, she she kind of sold that aspiration. And my my, my family, well, a few branches of my family started up their own business. They bought their own homes. How did she that, help them do that? Because I think she. And when you say they bought their own homes, were they former council houses? Uh, I think they, what they were, yeah. They so were, they, I mean, so they they weren't hers to sell, really. That, that's why we've got massive housing problems now. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying to you, right? So at the time, families like mine did really well out of that. They bought their own homes. Even if it was bad for the whole country? Well, it's only bad if you don't build any more. <laughs> well, she didn't. Yeah, well, yeah, but that, you, that is true. And then, and then she sold off all the utilities as well, didn't she? She did. And uh, How's that working out for you? Well, how, how do you like having the highest gas bills in Europe? Well, again, see, this is why... Every time I hear your program, right... Uh, <laughs> it's a simple question, mate. How do you like having the highest gas bills in Europe? I, I think it's awful. Right? Yeah. But but God bless I Margaret Thatcher and all, and all who's sailing up. No, I, I like it. I, li I think you're right. I'm sure if I'd been able to buy a council house on the cheap under Margaret Thatcher, I'd hold a candle for her as well. But have we got anything that made the country a better place rather than just you you and your family? James, every time we, there, there's, a, there's a debate on the radio, why does it always have to be so black and white? It's a bit like... This is, this, this, this is a family. celebration of the grey area, this program. Just, just answer the question, my friend. What, what do you think she did that made the country better rather than just your family's bank balance and property portfolio? Uh, I think I think she instilled a kind of feeling of, um, maybe not up north, but certainly down... down well, that, that, when I say the country, I do kind of mean all of it. Yeah, well, the country, nothing. Right. But, she, she, she but God bless her, eh? Well, we, as I say, she, I wish she was good to people like me, so she was... She, she I worked. think you're right. I, I, I'm sorry you felt unwelcome. I think you've nailed it in the very first call. You know, people who made a few quid out of her look back on her very fondly and stuff the country. Chris is in Luton. Chris, what would you like to say? Uh, good morning, James. Um, 
me and my dad couldn't really sit in the same room during the 80s uh, because we disagreed so much about Margaret Thatcher. But again, you know, what, what your last caller said, I mean, she allowed, you know, him to buy his council house. Well, he's never going to hear a word against her, is he? Well, this is it. Well, I mean... And nor should you. You inherited the house, didn't you? Uh, well, not yet. But no, you know, I think people are just completely and utterly. I mean, you know, the chances are we're we'll have to, to sell the house. I mean, I don't know whether we'll sell the house for her care. I mean, I'm glad we're oh, moving. I don't know what what the clue is yet with that at all. I mean, sure. she's getting on obviously. But I think people, like you say, are so completely. I mean, when I hear politicians say the electorate aren't stupid, I just. You know, it beggars belief that, that, you know, she stopped all the investment in this country. She created such divisions. The Falklands was a complete scam just to boost their popularity. Well, no. Uh, the, 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 no. The, the, the Falklands was invaded by yeah, Argentinian yeah, it soldiers. It wasn't a scam, Chris. Well, it could have been negotiated. It didn't need a war, in my opinion. Fair enough. Uh, to, to, to sort out, you know, a um, lot of lives lost. So, I, I was being a bit glib with the last fella. I was, I was teasing him a bit. It probably isn't as simple as saying, if you made a few quid out of her, you think the sun shines out of her fundament and the rest of the country can go whistle. But that is pretty close to what you're saying as well. Well, this is it. She just sort of tapped into the worst of people's selfish human nature. And we're still uh, paying for that. Absolutely, a million percent. You know, and now these lot are in, and they're, they're you know, the same sort of ideology. You know, wave the flag while selling everything off to other countries. You know, I mean, it, it, people, I just wish, you know, as working class people, I don't think we grow up to, to talk about politics. They like us just to sh shut up and get on with it, you know. Um, well, it's bread, bread and circuses. You, you've, you've, you've bought your council house now. Shut up and go away. <laughs> well, yeah, along those lines, you know, and I... I happens to me so much, you know, because, uh, you know, not just this country, but the world is in, you know, such a situation and people just want to bury their heads in the sand and, 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 and really not... Or blame someone else. There's always a lot of blame on someone else. I, I would stress, however, before this turns into a kind of a un, un, undiluted attack upon her legacy, that the miners were, were let down by Arthur Scargill a lot more than they were let down by her. That, that is the, 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 the fundamental industrial legacy of her years. And, and they brought it on them. Arthur Scargill was the architect of the miners' collapse, not Margaret Thatcher. And, of course, the, the, the run-up to that industrial action saw the country brought to its knees by much, much too powerful unions. I think Chris is onto something, though, when, when he talks about the fundamental intelligence of the country, is that people don't really like thinking too deeply about stuff. Argentinians, bad, Thatcher, good. Miners, bad, Thatcher, good. And then you wake up, sort of, in 2015, look around at a country that has effectively been successfully encouraged to blame all its problems on others, to effectively cheer the bankers as they rape the nation and boo the unemployed as they have the epic audacity to be unemployed, uh, turn upon doctors, turn upon police officers, turn upon teachers, turn upon firefighters. To me, that's her legacy. It's me, 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 and everybody else, especially if they're not turning a profit. If they've got, God, imagine that, being a teacher, <laughs> being, a, being a firefighter, being a police officer. It, it's the people who don't get out of bed every morning thinking, how much money can I make today, that have been left behind. And, and when you see it happening to doctors, you realise how far things have gone. But that's just me. That's just me. I'm sure you can tell me why you love her. Baroness Thatcher's personal collection of clothes, jewellery and political mementos is to be flogged off by her family after the V&A turned down the opportunity to display her outfits for the nation. Talk to me about that decision by the V&A and indeed by the family. And they're not really short of a few quid, are they? Didn't Mark Thatcher make a fortune flogging arms to the Saudis under a contract that his mother negotiated, the Al Yamamar deal? Oh, I don't know, maybe spent it all. Anyway, they're estimated to get about half a million from the collection. I would not be surprised. In fact, uh, you might want to look at this. Some of this stuff will go for way, way, way more than the reserve. Because I, I hesitate to use this word, but I've checked the dictionary and I'm using it accurately. 
there is a fetishization of Margaret Thatcher on the right that I want your help in understanding and explaining to my 22-year-old colleague because he just has a blank face. All he sees is, well, hang on, you know, I mean, she barely had her feet under the desk for 10 minutes when she abolished exchange controls, she deregulated bus routes, privatised buses, flogged off council houses, banned local government from building any more. See, Danny, the first caller, thought she was wonderful because his family bought a council house. He said all she should have done is build more. She actually banned local governments from building more. There were riots by 1981. Do you remember those? Prisoners in Northern Ireland's Maze Prison were on hunger strike by the end of that year. British shipbuilding was privatised in 83. And it just goes on. So a 22-year-old sits here. Here's some people on the right describe her as a, as a saintly figure whose legacy should be protected and cherished. And he's just confused. So, 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 apart from, oh, we made a few quid out of her and screw everybody else, apart from that attitude, why does she still enjoy such um, lofty regard in some quarters? And it, there doesn't appear from my inbox to be much mystery about which of my colleagues will be queuing up to, um, <laughs> to purchase a few of her old handbags or twin sets. 23 minutes after 11, Karen is in Pearly. Karen, what would you like to say? Yes, hello, Jane. Hello, Thanks Karen. for taking my call. You're most welcome. Um, the day she died, I did. I danced on her grave. Um, I mean, she, she, to start with, she, she said she is a mother and a grandmother, Karen. I, politically, you could abhor what she did, but she was someone's mum. <laughs> no, no, I know, darling. But um, her son didn't. Uh, th uh, sorry, her daughter didn't like her very much, and, and told us all publicly mm. there was a you know rift between them. But. You see, she started off very well, but at the end of the day, she did. She sold everything off. She, she raped us of everything, is what I'm going to say. She took everything from us, you know? She sold everything off. I mean, the state of the country now, I mean, is she, she started out to be a very good prime minister, but she started selling things. Well, she started, how do you say head. that? And, and I'm not here to, I mean, well, actually, I suppose I am in a way, but she, she started flogging stuff off less than a year after getting into Downing I know, Street. I know, I know, I know, but we didn't really... Did, did we not notice? I'm, I, am I younger than you, Karen? I don't, I don't want to be ungallant. I'm a little younger than you. I was, I'm 65. I was too busy um, watching Grange Hill while she was flogging off British really. Aerospace. Well, like, this is it. I mean, we were all in a bit of a daze because, like, she gave us this aspiration what you can do well, you can achieve so much more and whatever. And a lot of us thought that, you know, and I went for retraining, like, mm. thousands of us did. And I used to do three jobs and, like, a lot of us did. We'd done more work to gain what we could and then obviously invest in the banking system and, and it was great and whatever and then obviously down the line we started getting all these crashes and people started getting a bit nervous and at the end of it because we're so worried about our own affairs we've, we lost sight of what she was getting up to half the time and, and, and we lost out too I mean, I, I'm you know, going to defend her here because well, the mm. way you're describing it is mm. it's, it's a con trick and if she was not a con artist she believed passionately that what yeah. she was doing was right so i can read mm. this list now and you're familiar with it as well water mm. boards privatized british steel mm. privatized mm. british aerospace mm. fully mm. privatized british petroleum majority share flogged off rolls royce aero yeah. engines yeah. privatized um and, and i could go on i, I won't because it'd be a bit boring you know, shipping the mines or yeah. everything you know but she uh, did it, she, it she, she, how do you know she was wrong how do you know she was wrong to do that how do you know that we're worse now, off now because look at look at we're really suffering everything we we, we purchase gas, electricity, whatever, it's all, water, it's all coming from abroad. And we're paying so much for it, so much more than the rest of the world. And it's all wrong, James. And, and people wrong. are making a profit on everything. And uh, housing shortages are responsible for all manner of arguments and ills. <laughs> Karen, I think it's clear what side you're on. I quite Simon Holland, this is a pungent tweet, my friend. Margaret Thatcher died on her own in a hotel with people paid to like her. That's all you need to know about her legacy. I think she was staying there on a freebie as well, paid for by media moguls. Marion is in Cobham. Marion, what would you like to say? Quite opposite from the previous lady. I think she filled the country with a sense of optimism. How? I was very lucky. I was an estate agent, so I made a bit of money. So I've, I've excluded you! I've already said you can't just ring me up and tell me you made a few quid out of her and stuff everybody else! Well, I'm not like that, okay. um, but I am now disabled, and because I had permanent health insurance, I loved the fact that she took the tax off that. Yes. And so I had my um, payout from the health insurance. You don't often uh, do well out of insurance, is one thinks. Um, well, if you're lucky enough to have it, I think you've, God you've I did. sound a heck of a lot better than people who didn't. Yes. 
Um, but because I was a good estate agent, um, <laughs> and no an honest thing. one, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, she, um, I had the nickname of the Iron Lady of Wimbledon by my competitors. Uh, why? why? They, didn't, they didn't mean it as a compliment. Oh, I <laughs> see. I well, I, I think you're right to take it as such. But, but I, I, you, forgive me for pushing you a little harder, Marion. I, I can understand the personal... I enjoy it. The, well, so shall I in that case. The personal <laughs> uh, enrichment, uh, both through the insurance payout and, of course, through what you earned as an estate agent. But in terms of the country being a better place when she left it than she was when she arrived, aren't we still seeing the legacy of that today? We haven't got any. We haven't got any family jewels left. We haven't got any infrastructure. We've got no industry. We're a nation of call centres and coffee shops. Oh yes, I know that's true to a degree. And I never agreed with her selling off council houses. I thought that was a completely wrong move. Well, you were an estate agent. I was, but it, it, you know, I just didn't believe that that was the right thing to do. So explain to my twenty-two-year-old colleague. In words that he'll... 23, I beg your pardon. In words that he will understand, Marion. So you might have to throw in a few bruvs and bloods and inits and stuff like that, okay? What, what was it she had that, it, what, that entranced the nation? It was... As I say, it was... I don't... It's repetitive, but she, everybody felt optimistic. Okay. Well, well, it is repetitive, but that doesn't make it any less powerful. I, I, I think you're wrong. I think there's plenty of people that didn't, but, but, but you did, and that's good enough for me. It's 29 minutes after 11. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. We haven't talked about the clothes yet, have we? We haven't talked about whether or not the clothes should be put on permanent display. I think it's almost impossible to explain to, to a 23-year-old the polarisation of opinion here. Uh, so, I mean, everybody has got people who love them and people who loathe them, but to be so loved on the one side and so so loathed on the other is in in many ways i mean psychologically remarkable let alone historically if i asked you just to tug on that thread uh, of that polarity the loving and the loathing the simultaneous detestation and adoration what would what would you be left with you just pulled on that thread now and tried to explain to somebody who wasn't born when margaret thatcher became prime minister in fact rather depressingly some of them weren't born when she ceased to be prime minister what would you explain to them as the reason for the strength of feeling, whether negative or positive, but the sheer strength of feeling? You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. James O'Brien, weekdays 10 till 1 on LBC. 26 minutes to 12 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. In the next hour, we look at the teachers who are incapable of teaching grammar and full literacy to their pupils because their own grasp of grammar and literacy is so poor. This is... I, I have hardy perennials, if you're new to the programme, and I should thank you, actually, if you are. I, I got back from holiday to find out more people now listen to this programme than at any other point in... I was say in history, that's probably a bit pompous even by my standards. <laughs> so there's more people listening to this programme than ever before, which is lovely. But if you're one of the many new people to arrive, you've probably already picked up on, on the things that, that we enjoy talking about more often than others. It's not the kind of phone show that invites you every single day to ring up and tell me how awful foreigners are. Um, I like the notion that grammar and literacy don't matter. I, lo I love the argument that as long as you can understand what I mean, it doesn't matter whether I've spelled stuff wrong. And that now, as we predicted a few years ago, when teachers and actually university lecturers started telling us that they were being told not to mark down even undergraduates for spelling and grammar errors, as long as you could understand what they meant, that's now filtering down into the classrooms, which I think is a national disaster. I truly do. And yet... I, I know some people who are incredibly bright, but don't have great grammar or, or, or literacy. And it's quite hard, it's quite difficult to avoid offence when you're trying to explain to them why it's really, really important. So we'll try again after 12 to explain why grammar and spelling and little things like that really, really do matter and why we should all be up in arms about the fact that an increasing number of teachers um, is incapable of... of of conducting these classes because they're incapable, really, of, of understanding the issues themselves. That's all to come, also coming up in the programme. The um, member of the royal family who's swearing shocked Australia. Can you have a guess who it was? So, a former private secretary to the Queen. I'm very pleased to tell you it's not Her Majesty that, that managed to shock the nation of Australia. Australia has a rich and unparalleled history of swearing in fantastically creative and amusing ways. But which member of, still with us, which member of the current royal family, 
broke centuries of, uh, of, of, of royal tradition by going on walkabout, but more interestingly, perhaps, shocked the Australian public, or shocked Australia by swearing. Which member of the royal family do you think that was? We'll crack on with that in a minute. Back to the uh, royal family of politics, or at least to the nearest we've ever had to a queen in Downing Street, Margaret Thatcher. Why? Explain to a 22-year-old why feelings still run so deep about her. Chris is in Chichester. Chris, your turn. How are you doing, James? Good, mate. Uh, I adored her. Absolutely adored her. I think she made this country great. Again, we, we were in the economic doldrums. It, unions were wrecking this country in the early 70s, and I went through it all from a police point of view, because I stood on the picket lines time after time. Uh, you know, if you look at Red Robbo, the unions were intent on wrecking this country, and there was only one person willing to stand in the way, and that was her. And that's why I admire her. I mean, you couldn't... She went too far, though, didn't she? Uh, I think she was a flawed character. There were flaws, yes. big flaws in her character. I'll, 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 I'll agree that. But what she did with regards to the unions was a fabulous, a masterstroke. If they hadn't been controlled, they'd have destroyed this country. Destroyed it. And... I stood on the picket lines all over the country and done, did what I did from a very early service at Grumwick. I remember Grumwick, I'm that old. Uh, you know, and I saw what Labour had got up to and what they were doing and someone had to stop that, otherwise we'd, we'd be an absolute wreck. I think you're probably right. Uh, uh, although, for me, it, it, it's, it's the old pendulum, Chris. Uh, it's, it had swung way too far in one direction, the workers, the unions yeah. had... I mean, it's, it's odd, don't forget, don't for a working man like you to say the working men had too much... the working men and women well, of Britain had too much I'm, power. I'm a retired man, actually, but here we are. Yeah, I but you were working at the time that you developed oh, well. your adoration for her. Many people in the police force now would kill to have strong union representation. What do you say to them? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, what the Federation I was a member of, I mean, in my time, was going the wrong way when I retired. No, it's, a, it's not a trick question. There's six, six, uh, what have we got? Commis seven police and crime commissioners are writing to the Home Secretary today to complain about cuts to the police force that are going to damage not just their professionalism, but the public safety. So when you say we really, really did well to get rid of all unions, what do you say to the police officers who wish they still had one? Well, I mean, we, we could have this conversation all day. I could, I could make savings in the police service millions tomorrow. They wait. No, Mark, what do you what do you say to the to the people still in uniform who wish they had strong union representation? I, I say, man up and get on with it. Okay. That's what I say. All right. I do. I'm sorry. You might say it's a bit glib, but you know. I don't think glib's the word I'd use. But uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, yeah. But no, I adored. I so so man up and get on with losing your job because of cuts that aren't politically no. justified. Well, hang on. Who, who else is not using it, losing their job? But lots of people are losing their job. Yeah, they should all man up. Well, yeah. This is it. Mate, you're a genius. This is the legacy of Thatcher. I've got no idea whether it's politically necessary or not to sack these people, but anyone who's getting sacked should man up. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to happen the way it, it, it's, uh, it's playing and lambing out at the moment. I'm not, I don't think that's going to happen. But the, the fact of the matter is that the police service, uh, this is a long conversation, we could go on all day on this. Well, you, you, uh, you, keep, you keep saying that. It's, it's quite a short conversation, and, and it's circular at the moment. So you say to people who are getting screwed by the government, man up and get on with it. Yeah, yeah, get on with it. No, that's it. Like I said, I wasn't being, I wasn't being facetious. That is exactly the legacy of Thatcher. Stuff you all. Chris is in South End. Chris, what would you like to say? Hello? Hello? Chris, I, Chris, I feel I'm competing with somebody else for your attention. <laughs> Sorry, that's all right, no problem. Carry on. But, uh, I was going to say, I heard the other, um, I, I heard the other chap a minute ago, and uh, I completely disagree with the other chap there. I, I actually didn't like Margaret Thatcher. And why not? Why, why did your feelings run so deep? Because that's what I want both sides to explain, the depth of feeling. Because no one's going to look back on David Cameron and feel their passions ignite in the way that they do over Margaret Thatcher, either positively in the last Chris's case, or in your case, Chris, negatively. Well, the reason being is because I think David Cameron is more of a governor rather than someone who wants to lead and take change. I mean, he's already said he's going to stand down mm. before the next general election. So that, that's a way of saying that really he just wants to oversee the job rather than force real change. I mean, um, just a to touch upon with Thatcher, yeah. um, I think Paddy Ashdown summed her up perfectly in the sense that some of her policies were in moderation needed at the time but like you say she went too far and that is a price we're still paying today 
Absolutely. I mean, literally Absolutely. still paying today as we as we pour money into French government-owned utility companies in order to turn on the heating in our homes in Britain. Yeah, absolutely, Jane. Absolutely. I mean, one thing I will say as well is, I mean, people are having a go at Jeremy Corbyn, but Margaret Thatcher, right, this is what Margaret Thatcher said. She said privatising the railways would be a step too far. A price we're still paying today. Absolutely. I mean, literally absolutely. still paying today as we, as we pour money into French government-owned utility companies in order to turn on the heating in our homes in Britain. Yeah, absolutely, Jane. Absolutely. I mean, one thing I will say as well is, I mean, people are having a go at Jeremy Corbyn, but Margaret Thatcher, right, this is what Margaret Thatcher said. She said privatising the railways would be a step too far. Yes, she did. Now, why is it when she says it? Uh, people agree with that, even though he's still privatised. But yet, Jeremy Corbyn wants to renationalise the railways, and yet, suddenly everyone thinks he's a madman. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very good point. Not, not everybody thinks he's a madman. Maybe the answer would just be timing. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm um, just to give you a quick heads up on this new app. I haven't found out much about it yet, but it's reported in the Times today that police officers can be filmed as they exercise stop and search powers with a new app that sends an incident report to rights campaigners who, if appropriate, will pass it on to lawyers. It's called Why Stop. That's Y hyphen S T O P, and it enables an individual to record an encounter on their smartphone with the time, the location, the officers involved, and an account of what happened. It's been created by the charity Stopwatch and Release. I think we'll look a little bit further into that this week. Time now is 11.42. Thatcher's legacy. Strange phrase, really. It's all about legacy these days. It wasn't a word you ever heard until quite recently. Tony Blair obsessed with his legacy. David Cameron apparently obsessed with his legacy. Well, Margaret Thatcher's got a legacy that neither of those men will come close to. But it's as negative in parts as it is positive. And I want you to tell me why. Also, the clothes. What should we do with them? Paul's in sitting board. Paul, pick a question and answer it. No. Nick's in partnering. Nick, what would you like to say? Um, yeah, on uh, why she used black clothes, uh, I think we have the first female Prime Minister, and she had the uh, general public's background, you know, she was the greengrocer's daughter, uh, so she had, inverted commas, the, the common touch. So that appealed to a lot of people. Plus it was... How do, how, how do, just, uh, describe the common touch to me, in that... In that, in that. Um, oh, you. <laughs> well, tough one now you've gone and said it like that. But I was just thinking that it's, <laughs> it, she, she has, she came out with these great one-liners. Like, but, uh, no, hang on. No, 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 are, you, are, you, are you ducking yeah, the common yeah. touch question? Because the Queen, no, no, the no, queen no, once no, said, reported, different point. the Queen reportedly said that Margaret Thatcher's far too grand for the likes of us. So I'm just interested in where you think she displayed a common touch. Um, I'm not necessarily saying she displayed it, but her background was such. Oh, okay. That people would always, could always raise that and go, and say, yes. hey, look, we've got she a knows what it's like. So da David Cameron yeah. yesterday ambushed on the yeah. telly for not knowing any poor people. She could say, well, actually, you know, uh, my, my, well, my dad was a shopkeeper, but some of his customers were poor. Yes, but I think where she was most, why she is most loved is, dare I say it, is the, is the F word, which is the Falklands. Oh. Because she was now, don't, don't worry, I'm not supporting it <laughs> before we get it, but it was because she was seen to be the leader of Little Britain, and hey, we stood up to the Argentinians on the other side of the world, and even America was telling us not to get involved, and we did, and we won. The irony is that we won by the skin of our teeth, and it partly happened because of defence cuts that were on her watch. We're talking the Conservatives who are supposedly the... Uh, oh, you're uh, clever. The... Or, or, or at least knowledgeable, Nick. I don't know you well enough to conclude well, that I, you're I, clever, I, but you're, you're knowledgeable because I, people I, forget I, Carrington's I, resignation, don't they, when they talk about the Falklands? Uh, uh, don't mention John not to need that. Um, yes. still sticking needles in that waxwork doll. <laughs> but, you know, part of the reason the Falklands... You, could, uh, you know, people will argue the point, but part of the reason the Falklands occurred is because Navy cuts meant that we actually pulled away the one ship that we had the in that area, and the uh, Argentinians sort of took the opinion of, hey, the Brits don't even care what we do, let's, let's go in there. And was that a result of cuts? Would cuts be the right word to use to describe the decisions? Yeah. Yes. Uh, there were the, the Navy at that time, if you talk about, you know, the British Navy, the pride of Britain, etc., you know, our little island nation, it was being savaged, it was being absolutely brutalised. We, we couldn't even have the Ark Royal that we sent over wasn't the art wrong that one remembers from the TV documentary, which you know sort of did great for uh, of course. Navy recruitment morale. Yes, it was, it was this ridiculous little thing that carried. God bless him, the little uh, 
carriers that turned out to be very, very good at what yeah, they were and, and, and deeply effective. I'm, I'm late for the travel news. It just, it just occurs to me that, you, you know, the last caller but one trumpeting uh, his adoration of Margaret Thatcher and telling anybody who doesn't feel well represented in the workplace, including his former colleagues in the police service, to, to, to somehow man up because the cuts are necessary and yet her greatest hour, in many ways, the Falklands, you remind us, was brought about by military cuts. That's why Carrington resigned, I think, uh, uh, taking responsibility for the failure to, to foresee the Argentinian action. But history's written by the winners. I like this from Craig in South Woodford. Not only has he explained that Twitter is too restrictive a medium for him to properly express his views on Margaret Thatcher, he's, he's, he's provided me with them in a lengthier form. Margaret Thatcher's legacy is actually division. Um, a lot of you are making this point. Uh, but Craig makes it perhaps best. The overall ideology she pursued provided one side with the means to grow, aspire and enrich themselves, but it was at the expense of the other side. So the Thatcher lovers will be keen to point out that her policies helped people onto the bottom rung of the ladder um, and perhaps even helped them climb as high as they wanted. The haters resent the fact that she pulled the ladder up too high for those not even on the bottom rung to be able to grab it and start her ascent. Where I hail from in Tyneside, there is still hatred for her and her policies because we were the people that had the ladder hoisted out of our reach. Her policies destroyed the local employment opportunities, mining, shipbuilding, other heavy industries. And in the same period, her policies, rhetoric and ministers demonised welfare. On our side of the divide, we had jobs being taken away and at the same time we were being demonised for needing welfare help to survive. Anyone hearing any echoes yet? It's being told that it's our own fault for not climbing the ladder which had been pulled out of reach. Fascinating. And indeed, possibly repeating itself as we speak. I, I, I want to know why you loved her. 0345 6060 And I want you to explain to a 22-year-old or a 23-year-old, someone very much not around when she became Prime Minister, why she still inspires such strong feeling. I, 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 all I get from the fan club is self-enrichment and a sort of weird fetishization, But that possibly is because I'm a little bit blinkered on the issue. Keith is in Bromley. Keith, what can you tell us? Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Hello, Keith. Yes, um, when Megan Thatcher was uh, in power, I was uh, working, I, mean, I was a unionist, I worked in, in Free Street. Oh, yeah. And uh, in the papers. And also, I blame her for destroying Free Street, destroying mines, destroying the docks, destroying a working man and having armed police and British soldiers on the streets as bullies and Gestapo. And I mean that really. I can tell you do, and I'm going to ask you to answer a question that's come in by text from, from a younger listener, younger than me saying, I, I hear all of this, and, and it's all I ever really hear when people talk about Margaret Thatcher, so how did she win so many elections? Because of the, um, the bosses, they, they, they paid, they paid for her. They paid for votes. They bought the votes. How? I've no idea how that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that kind of undermines your analysis, doesn't it? And, and you know, I, I, I'd make no secret of my own feelings on the issue, but we've got to be able also, to explain why she won elections. Also, also, I mean, when I say the mines and the Fleet Street and the, and the docks, that's the only percentage of the vote voting. The rest of them were, were in offices, banks. So they, they, they didn't sell this. They were okay. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't just bankers that voted for it. it was huge swathes of the working class, and you could argue that she invented the working class Tory, and we we we, we still see it now. The, the kind of sense that people are cheering and celebrating while they're actually getting urinated on from a great height because they think they're on the winning team when they're not. For me, the answer's simple, Keith. I, I sort of vaguely rhetorical the question: How that, how did she win all those elections if she was so awful? Rupert Murdoch. L l lackeys and lickspittles are still pouring lies down the throats of the British public today about what is happening to them while <laughs> fraudulently persuading them that they're somehow on the winning side. Jonathan's in Streatham. Jonathan, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, mate. Um, yeah, I think the name Margaret Thatcher, to me, she represents somebody who is very strong and powerful. I think you have to say that earlier to that last caller. Any leader that can win three general elections, obviously there are many people that, that liked her. Um, yes. Also, I think on the downside, for somebody who, for a person who uh, sold off uh, the council homes, which is part of the reason why we've got the housing problem now, sold off utilities as well, you know, I support people that represent and help, try to help the majority. So, and even though many people voted for it, obviously, three times, um, but looking at the legacy, I think... Some of their policies were, were were not was a bit detrimental in the long term. So a bit of plus and minus 
both sides. So, well, well then, then that, that should inspire ambivalence then. That should inspire a kind of absence of passion, and yet passion is the one thing that everyone agrees she conjures up. I think so, and I think it's because, this, this is just my opinion, but I think it's because she was, you know, her strength and her power was something to be admired in some respect. I think yeah. that was part of it. And, and, and there's a narrative, isn't there, involved in, in her very existence or her very uh, achievement of being Prime Minister in, the, in that you, there's an almost romance to being the woman who, who defeated all the men and, and held them all in thrall and led them from the front. And regardless of where she led them, the simple act of leading and achieving the role of leader becomes, becomes I suppose in the eyes of her admirers, becomes a little bit magical, regardless of what she did with the leadership. Um, Jonathan, thanks. I want to squeeze in a couple more if I can. Abbas is in Redbridge. Abbas, what would you like to say? Hi there. Good morning, James. Thanks for getting me on. Um, well, basically, what I'd like to say, I was about nine, ten years old when uh, Margaret Thatcher was campaigning to uh, to be a, a elected uh, for, for government. Uh, and I remember as an Asian, young Asian, first generation Asian, uh, a, a, a real feeling of being unwanted, actually, of being a burden on, on society and and somehow not being welcomed in, into a country that I regarded and I, and, and thank still do it as my home and the country that I love dearly. How did she do that? I mean, because you were on the receiving I, I, end of it. I, I, I remember even at nine, ten years old, Margaret Thatcher saying things like, uh, um, you know, Im about immigration. And isn't, isn't that amazing that we were still talking about those things in, in, in the of course, of course it's not amazing mate if you if you were a puppet master with billions of pounds in the bank and a very small tax bill who would you want to be blaming for the country's perceived ills yeah, well, well exa exactly of course and and and, I, and and it was a narrative that she used and, and no doubt she was very much more uh, politically astute and, and and you know politically correct in, in how she p uh, put her words but the people who heard those words weren't quite so uh, you know uh, diplomatic and they were quite in your face and it was like yeah all these foreigners are taking our jobs and they're taking our uh, our schools and they're taking over and we need to restrict them we need to stop them and in, in those days it was mainly uh, black and then possibly mainly asian uh, you know uh, immigration and it did very much so feel like it was like you know and, and it, i think there were many ugly scenes after she came into power where you know, and I'm not saying it was directly because of her, but you know, being chased by skinheads down a street because they wanted to hunt you like a like a fox and hounds and and things like that. And I and I, and I actually, perhaps naively and perhaps uh, somewhat incorrectly, but I, I did blame Margaret Thatcher for a lot of what I went through when I was young because I felt that she instilled that type of view in people, and, um, and it was an it was an extreme view. And I hadn't certainly, as a young lad, uh, experienced that. Uh, before Margaret Thatcher, and, it, and no doubt it may have been. Well, nah, there must before. have been racism in the early 70s and the 60s. And oh, the there, there must have been, Jake, but I was perhaps too young to actually. Oh, I guess see that, I see you know, what you mean. It's when uh, you, you, so you veered into their sights, it coincided with her being Prime Minister. I'm going to defend her and say I don't think she did engender that attitude at the time. I think it was a sort of chronological coincidence, wasn't it? Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I mean, I think well, what I saw was people coming on to the TV being interviewed and, and all agreeing emphatically, passionately with what Margaret Thatcher was saying. And then, and then, of course, I, you know, I suppose to, to take her support for apartheid South Africa into the equation as well, you, you would probably struggle to... <laughs> to win the argument, I would struggle to win the argument with you that she was in any way colour blind or not conscious of racial politics. It's, uh, well, crikey, where's that hour gone?